And it's go time because it's show time. And I was talking about this earlier. You know what? TikTok, TikTok goes the clock. Ticking in my head, bro. TPV Nation, everybody. We are live from the Static Planet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever it is for you, wherever you are right now, I hope you got a tasty beverage in hand, at least a sandwich. You got Fido the family dog next to you. You got Grandmama out of bed as well. You got plucked her down. You got put her teeth in the right way so she doesn't eat herself to death. Because we are live and we're happening. Kyle Mangus is there. Oh, my God. Hello. Hi, sign already all the people. Jeanette, the Facebook user, saying, hi, guys. We can't see your name. Please say who you are. That's right, Dale. What a show we have in store tonight. Hot off of Pot of Grass Parafest 5. We just got done doing that. You were there representing, shaking babies, kissing hands, as they say. All that good stuff. You're getting it done. There's Sarah Jane, of course, from the Get Haunted crew and of course we are blessed to be part of hashtag blessed thankful grateful humble to be part of the get haunted paranormal podcast program sarah jane thank you very much to rob and everybody that's part of this that helps to get us out and of course many other podcasts out an opportunity to be seen and heard the way it should be everybody has room in the sandbox learn that line from sarah jane and nothing can be further from the truth and of course we are live right here right now on facebook we are live right here right now on youtube and of course there will be a replay you can listen to it only on kgra digital that is worldwide every saturday night at 1 a.m dale pot of grass for pooches pot of grass parafest tim miley murray's legacy how was that oh it was we had a spectacular two days uh, hanging out up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with everybody attending the Potographs uh, event this year. Like I said, they had a stacked speaker roster. I mean, it started at five o'clock on Friday evening, and we went till about eight o'clock Friday, and then wow. Saturday morning, nine a.m., hit the ground running. I'll tell you what an amazing event! People were really excited to be there. We had lots of fun. We were hanging out. Got to sit uh, next to our good friend, the lovely Miss Mary Bassett, who was hanging out right next to me all weekend. It was a lot of fun. Love yeah, we, it, it was good to catch up with the Para family. And yeah. Tim, Tim, all right, Tim and Lauren and Todd put on one hell of an amazing event. Like, I mean, wow. I mean, uh, I, 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 I was just tired watching those two just run around. But yeah, no, it was an absolutely amazing event. Like the whole weekend went off spectacular. We ended they they ended up raising seven thousand dollars for the animal shelter. Yeah. So good for everybody who showed up, helped out, and uh, really like really did their part. And like I said, it was mostly most of all feeling really good about raising money for the animal shelters. Hoping somebody that could find their their Murray because you know we all know the story of Tim Malley. And an amazing, it's just, it's a heartbreaking story. So for everybody that was there this weekend, thank you to everybody who stopped by, talked to the TPV Nation. It was a lot, a lot of fun. It was, it was just amazing. And it was just good. Like I said, it's, it was the first, first event of the year. So we're now out of the gates. We are now galloping. We are on our rocket ship of a train going through the paranormal season. And coming up next, we do have the Midwest Parafest out there in Toledo, Ohio, with uh, yeah. Chad and Heather Die. That's going to be exciting. Can't wait to get out there, hang out, hanging out with some more pair of people. So if you want tickets for the Midwest Parafest, go over to MidwestParafest.com. Get your tickets today. Also, they got a special event happening. So right after the event happens Saturday night, they're going to have a dinner party happening. But you who are attending can click on and choose the Paris celebrity you would love to sit with. 
and be able to hang with wow. and pick their brain later. I mean, you can That's cool. sit with you can sit with Miss Mary Bassett herself. You can sit with uh, Candace Isaacson. You can sit with Exy Suzanne Bruce Smith, Andrea Perron. I mean, all oh the all the speakers that are going to be there wow. this, that weekend. Yeah, you can buy Good a deal. special ticket, dinner ticket, and sit right at the table so that you can hang out with all of these amazing people, pick their brain, ask questions, and you may never know what's going to happen. So that is the Midwest Pair Fest that's coming up April 13th, right there in Toledo, Ohio, at the Oliver House. So come on down, hang out with us. Get your tickets, MidwestParafest.com. And then right after that, we are doing our debut speaking at the Body, Mind, and Spirit event right there in Oxford, Michigan. Of course, hosted by the lovely Candace Isaacson and Exie Bruce Suzanne, or it's Exie Smith, Smith, Bruce, uh, something <laughs> like that. Anyway, <laughs> Exie and Candace, they put on this amazing event out there in Oxford. So go over, check that out. That is a one-day event. I believe the doors open at 1 o'clock, goes till 6 o'clock. Yeah. $5 to get you in the door, and it's all about we're going to be speaking. Exy's going to be speaking, Candice, and they're going to have other mediums there. They're going to have Reiki masters there. There's going to It's just an amazing event. So it's going to be a pet now. psychic there. That's, that's a worth pet the price psychic, of yes. in my head. I got so many fur babies that have passed on. If I can take one photo and she sees something from one of them, I'd be a happy man all day. Oh, yeah. No, of course. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So that, once again, is April 20th out there in Oxford, Michigan. It, it just go on Facebook. You can find it. It's called the Body, Mind, and Spirit Event Spring Fling out there in Oxford, Michigan. So, yeah, like I said, we got a lot coming up. April's right around the corner. I mean, it's scary to think already, but we're on the ground, boots running, and here we are. We have another spectacular guest coming our Do way. Do we? Oh my God, dude! You want to... <laughs> this is a guy. This guy's got gifts, 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 gifts for days, right? Uh, psychic abilities, mediumship abilities. Uh, this guy spent time talking with elementals. He's spent time speaking. He says, you know, which I can't wait to hear these stories, uh, different dimensions. Uh, he's healed others through touch. Uh, also something called burst energy. I'm excited to find out what that's all about. Along with that, he's done or identification. We're just naming a few here. Uh, he also, on top of all that busyness, he hosts a show. It's called, and I love this name. This is amazing. Stuff I never learned from a school book. So, like I like to say, brother, we are hashtag blessed, thankful, grateful, humble. Uh, to say the very least, to bring to all of you live right here on Facebook, YouTube, KGRA Digital Worldwide, the one and only Tom Springer. Hey, everyone. Hey, Dale. Hey, Michael John. How you doing? Good, good, brother. good, good. Welcome aboard, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to come on to the TPV Nation and yes. la allowing you. us to pick your brain and <laughs> just, just find out, like, why why didn't you learn this stuff in a school book? Like, I mean, I guess we would have all stayed in school if we could learn what right? we know now. <laughs> right? I, I would still be in school if I could have been learning this stuff in a school book. <laughs> Absolutely. But no, thank you so much. Absolutely. It's, it's such a great pleasure. Good. I I, I, I met Tom a little while ago. We were on the same podcast. Uh, Richie, I think it was Richie. No, no, it was uh, Paranormal Blonde Roundtable, wasn't it? Yes. Paranormal. Yep. Paranormal Blonde Roundtable. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, and that was a lot of fun. Up. Just listen, listening to you and getting awesome. to know you a little bit over there, that was a lot of fun. I'm like, man, we have to have this guy on because, <laughs> wow, I mean, it, it, it's like I, I've watched your show in the past, and then it was like, wow, this 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 guy's got some really good, interesting stuff. But, I mean, how you came up into the paranormal. So we're, we're going to kick it right off from just like that. It's like, what got you into the paranormal? Well, it's a... It's, uh... It's a very short story because I've actually only had my gifts for about three years. Uh, so I'm a newcomer, as they say, into the, into the paranormal world. Okay. And I was actually invited along with a couple of my friends who were part of a paranormal investigation team. And they asked me and my wife to come along and they said, hey, just come check it out. Um, they really weren't inviting us to the team, but I just kind of wanted to see what they took, what they did, because we were really interested. And uh, we ended up going to a, a location and... 
we set up all the equipment like everybody does, the cameras and everything else, kind of felt the area out. And nothing was really happening, still trying to get our feet wet, planning to get things started. And all of a sudden, I see this full body apparition walk into my line of sight. And I was like, well, that's different. And, um, right. and, and on our team, we had a couple other mediums as well. And uh, we were sitting there, and um, I start talking to the lady. And she starts talking back to me. And it's just a normal conversation, but I can see her. The two other mediums can see her, but the other people were like, is he randomly talking to himself? What's going on here? So um, then my medium's like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, oh, I'm talking to this lady over here, and this is her name, and this is what she looks like. And they're like, wait a minute. We can see her. Why can you? And I'm like, because uh, she showed herself to me? And they were like, how long have you been able to do this? And I looked at my watch, and I went, 10 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> So that was my introduction to the paranormal world. Uh, it was literally oh my on, a, on, my, on my first full-blown weekend long. So we actually stayed for two nights uh, investigation. And as we were going on, we found out that I had other abilities that were kind of presenting themselves to me. And I tell people it was like drinking from a fire hose. They just, it wasn't, uh, they did yeah. not introduce them to me slowly. Uh, they were like, here, have all these and good luck figuring out what to do with them. Which is why stuff I never learned was created because I needed help trying to figure out yes, how to yes. deal with everything I was working with. But... Wow! Because I mean, to go there with I mean with trepidation and you know not really. I mean, you're a believer, but not a believer. Can I say it like that? But yeah, you go yeah. there, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, you don't believe? You're gonna believe. And right. by the way, here have all this. Thank you right. very much, and welcome aboard. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. Deny it now. I mean, yeah, sure. Great, wow. thanks. <laughs> wow. I always I want to say hello real quick to some people on the side. Uh, Stuart <laughs> Gesselman, Jason Combs, Candace Isaacson, Jeanette S, Adam Weislick. I haven't seen you in a while, brother. We you've been missed. Great to see you. Uh, other people, we got a bunch of Facebook users. Say who you are, please, so we know who you are. Saying hello, we can't see the name uh, through the Streamyard app that we're on. Jennifer Lindsay Palmer. Love you, darling. Okay, I think I got everybody so far. Uh, oh, no, wait. Kathy Newman as well. She's saying good evening and hi to Tom. Uh, you got some fan base going on here, Tom. Thanks for bringing them over with us. We certainly yeah, I've seen a couple of bleed over from my show that are coming over to say hi to you guys as well. So that's, that's nice. That's fantastic. Yes, thank you. Now, you got abilities like uh, we were saying. You got different areas, that, okay, that you, you've all of a sudden you found literally in a hot minute, right? So oh, psychic, yeah. mediumship, uh, and you've spoke to elementals. Can we yeah. touch on that for a quick minute? Absolutely. That's one of my Thanks. favorites. Um, that's one of my favorites. Uh, it turns out that one of my one of my team leads or one of my teammates, um, one of her uh, protectors is a, is a fire elemental, and she knew she had a fire elemental, but she did not. She has never. It has never appeared to her. And we were in the middle of something, and it was, and we knew that we were in an area where a portal was, and it was not a, um, it was not an appreciative portal, it was not a friendly portal, okay. and I could literally, I walked, I watched her fire elemental, elemental step in front of the portal, to stop anything evil that could come out of it to hurt us, and it basically stood there, and I started describing what it was doing. I'm like, hey, by the way, I don't know what this is, but I described it. She goes, seriously. You're just watching my fire elemental. And I'm like, oh, is that what I'm watching? And she's like, yeah. She goes, it's never presented itself to me. She goes, why can you see it? I'm like, I don't know. It just walked in and I started watching it. And then uh, as other investigations happened, I was starting to identify other elementals. And there they talked to me um, so I can see here and talk to them just like I am both of you here. Wow, um, really? They appear just as normal to me. Uh, and I've learned a lot about them through um, just trying to communicate with them. And I say try because they don't always feel like communicating. They're busy working. Um, and so they don't um, – sometimes they will respond. Sometimes they won't. Uh, it's, it is not in their best interest to try to make friends. They could care less <laughs> about making friends. Um, but they do hold different roles. But ultimately, they are built from the environment. They're not like from other – um, dimensions or anything else like that. They're actually of the of the environment of the earth itself, and they are um, doing what they need to to protect the earth. 
That is literally what they're here for. So fire cleanses the earth, water water heals and, and grows the earth. Wind helps clear everything out of the air uh, and and um, earth elementals literally will rebuild and just try to heal the earth when it's broken. And that's what it's there for. And they're all different sizes. So sometimes you'll be thinking, oh, an elemental is it is this size. No, you can have an elemental the size of a, of a, of a little fay, and you can have elementals the size of a hurricane. So they're all different and they're not and they don't all look the same. Elementals come in different ethnicities is the best way I can describe it. An yeah. earth elemental does not always look like it's a bunch of boulder heads sitting around. If you are <laughs> in an area like that, then that's what they're going to look like. That is their environment they are in. If they are in a wood environment, they will look like a wood, like a wood person or like a wood element, uh, like a tree or something along those lines. So it really depends on where they're at, identifies what best I can say is ethnicity they are. So what I want to ask to that, uh, have you ever seen, okay, so two, it's a, I guess two questions. So you mentioned portals. Um, oh my God, you've, you've, you've said so much stuff. You triggered all these questions. I love it. Oh my God. So much info. I, I, man, it's amazing what, what you're sharing here. Um, are, have you ever seen a, like a, an elemental where you're like, oh my God, that's terrifying. Um, hold on. If you give me. Give me a second. I'll, I'll share with you what I look at because um, I actually asked them at one point, can you please show me um, what you look like? And they were gracious enough to let me see uh, if I can find it relatively quickly. Uh, what I see um, when I was taking pictures of it or, or when I was actually out in Hawaii, as a matter of fact, and I was over there and I was meeting up with a couple of people who I have associated with on my site. Um, Joe Pano Joe Pano who runs uh, Hawaiian Hauntings over there, and he's been doing this for years and years. And uh, he took me out to go investigate some of the the island uh, areas where, like King Kamehameha was at, um, their temple grounds and everything else like that. And I was waiting for them, and this Earth Elemental walked out straight into my vision and stood there as as, as a protector. And we had a nice, oh, wonderful conversation uh, about that. And um, he enlightened me. I was allowed to be there, but um, they were going to be watching us. And they did uh, very much so. Um, so here's kind of hard to see. Hopefully the camera will see it. I circled it, but you can see the lighter green. All that was all, all of that was that, that kind of yellowish green color. And when I asked okay. it to appear, it turned itself to that bluish green leaf color at night so I could actually see its outline with its head and its arms and everything else. And that oh, thing wow. right there is about 12 feet tall. Um, Jesus. And then the other one that appeared was this wonderful one. Um, I think I was nice enough to circle it for you, but this one was about 40 feet tall. Um, you can kind of see the, the head outline and the body uh, through the skyline. Wow. And that's about 40 feet tall. And... Um, Amazing. That was one of the larger ones. That's actually the one who told us it was time to leave and literally pushed over a tree right in front of us, letting us know it was time to leave. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, "Yep, I'm going. See you later. Thank you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thank, thanks for the warning." Yep. Uh, that th so this is uh, our our good friend Mary Bassett. Uh, she says she has a fabulous picture that she took of the wo woods in the woods of elementals like oh, where yeah. she out where she lives it's like it's 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 beautiful scenery out there so i mean that that's pretty amazing and then we got our our good buddy from across the border ron mexico ron thank you for joining oh, us ron, buddy ron, always good man. to see you um uh, but yeah no um i i've just started hearing more and more stories about elementals like yeah. i've always heard about them yeah but i see I, I i it seems to be that more and more people are talking about them yes so is this like a sudden like all of a sudden they're like okay here we are we're we're uh, uh a lot of people a lot of people had a misunderstanding or identifying spirits or elementals as spirits, okay. uh, not realizing that they were elementals. And so a lot of times they do get uh, misconstrued about what they're actually dealing with. Um, I, I had to go clear a house where I thought I was going to clear a house where we thought there was a, uh, a spirit that was being a little, a little over anxious to someone. And we went to that location and I could feel the anxiousness she was feeling. 
And I was like, this isn't a spirit. This is an elemental. It's an earth elemental. Has your house been worked on recently? And she said, yes. Someone flipped it before I moved in and they didn't finish the basement. So the elemental was down there trying to fix the earth in the basement that he had torn up. Wow. Um, so the anxious that she was feeling was not from spirit. It was just the elemental being so large and so gregarious that it just overwhelmed her and it made her scared. And when I went down to confront it, um, it actually, we had a, we had a discussion, a discussion. Uh, we were trying to film it and it actually sucked the life out of our batteries. Um, okay. and then, and then it threw rocks at me and there were five of us down there. And all of a sudden they see these rocks come flying out of the other room where I'm at with it. And it was like, they were like, what was that? I'm like, it got mad at me and threw rocks at me. So uh, <laughs> oh, we, we had to have a discussion and, and everything became copacetic. The house calmed down. She's, she's very much, uh, it allows her to stay in the, in the premise and, and be calm. And, um, in turn, she will bring down like flowers and stuff that she shows that she's helping support the the growth of the earth and everything else. So, yep. Portals. Yes. You mentioned portals. <laughs> um, sure I did. purposely in my hallway here, I have a mirror across from a mirror because that's yep. supposed to trigger that. Um, I, I try to trigger things here. I told her backstage a, a little yep. bit about me. But anyways, um, there, there must be more than one type of portal and you must have seen uh, I mean, you could probably describe more than one. Could you, would you mind doing that for us? No. Um, one of the first portals I came across was, it's very odd. It was, we were located, I was, we were doing an investigation. There was six or seven of us at the investigation. We walked into this, into this house and I just happened to see, I look over at a picture and there is a swirl on the picture that I can see underneath one of the legs of, because there was a piano painted on the picture and I can see where the swirl was. Um, I go, there, we have a portal over there. And me, so just know that I, we know this for stupid reasons that I have, I have no fear of anything. And I always tell people it's because I'm too dumb to know any better. Um, <laughs> it's really the right. truth behind that. Um, so I walked over to put my hand on the portal because I wanted to feel its energy. And it literally was like two magnets that wouldn't touch. It, it repelled me. It pushed me away. It would not allow me to touch the energy of the portal. Whereas later one of our other teammates came in and she i told her where the portal, portal was and she wanted to feel it and she had to get grabbed and pulled back because it tried pulling her in and oh, it wow. was a, it was actually a portal that was created by a dark witch who invited in um an evil being and trapped it in the house um so um so that was one form of a portal we came up against i've also felt portals um for those who haven't met me before i am indigenous as well as norse um so a lot of times i'll feel those different types of portals and i felt an indigenous portal um there was one actually at a at a, at a farm property i was at and i can feel the portal to where the uh spirit of the indigenous people would walk through the same time every evening because they would come out of the forest and they would head into the grasslands where they would hunt uh, so i was able to see that and the people i was with we actually caught recordings of the indigenous people um basically talking as they walk through that portal so it was kind of cool so we, we've seen a couple of different ones um i've seen a water portal happen as well um we've seen a portal in a well <laughs> where um something that should that was, that was making the land sick uh in order for us to stop being able to find it it actually went into a well and portal and we actually had to find a way to get into the portal uh physically grab it through the portal and pull it out um and remove it from the property so that was a little interesting. And of course I was the one volunteered to do that. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's been a handful of different portals we, that we've seen. Um, we've also used um, kind of what you would expect like a scrying ball or something along or a scrying mirror to where we're in separate rooms and someone is watching what's happening in the room we're in through the portal that they're watching through the sphere or through the mirror. So even oh. though they turn their head and watch us, they get a totally different image of what the of what's happening by looking into this portal and seeing what's going on in the room. For instance, when we when they were watching us through the portal, it was an area that was very high activity that not, did not want to let us leave. So he could see like the red, it looked like a red energy gate or a fence that was put up, like an electric fence that he could see Neat. through wow. it that didn't want did not want to let us go. Oh so, yeah. Wow. I mean that's 
<laughs> wow, that is like so much information to take in. Like my <laughs> mind's got like thirty million questions now. Sorry. No, no, no. I mean, th- <laughs> hey, this is this is why we do the show. I mean, it, it's not only about you know us learning, but I mean, how many more people have never really had to deal or even know what a portal is, let alone right. elementals or even how a portal would become? I mean, because I mean, by pure ignorance, most people say, "Well, a portal, it's got to be." a part of the demonic world because what demons only come through, but right. it is not Absolutely true. Not. I mean, Absolutely not. I, I mean, portals are, are used for different modes. I mean, even Bigfoot himself has been said to use portals yep. to get from or escape or get to an area without what they're seeing or whatever it might be. But I mean, I, I don't necessarily look at a portal as being a bad thing. Right. I, I really in the paranormal, I don't look at anything being a bad thing. It's what you make of it. Right. But it's pure education is why we're here talking about what we're talking about today. Like even elementals, people even say they are not all good. Well, I mean, everything well, has good and bad. There's probably are some bad elementals out there, but as the ones you are describing, they're here to do good. Like can they're I, here, they've got a purpose. Explain that. Can I take a second to explain that? I think yes. I can clear this up with a very simple statement. Elementals can care less what we think. They do not understand good and bad. They only understand what they are there for. If we understand that as being something bad, that does not necessarily mean they look at it being bad. They don't have that understanding. Uh, fire wipes out stuff. People are like, oh, fire elementals are bad. They wipe out things. No, fire element, elemental knows I need to clear this area so life can grow back into it. Um, and so they don't have that consciousness like we do of good and evil. They just know this is my role. This is what I'm here for. How you perceive it is up to you. But I do not perceive it that way. I only know what I'm doing. Right. And, and I mean, thank you. I mean, that that is probably the most clearest example of this is what they are. They have a job. We all have a purpose in life. We're, we're all here for a purpose. Right. Some of us know what that purpose is. Some of us do, are still trying to figure out what that purpose is. <laughs> but I mean, they know, just like you said, they are here. They they. They're here to do a job. They do their job, and then they go back and wait for their next turn to come up again. Correct. Now, now, would you say elementals are of an indigenous descent? Because we all know, like, native indigenous people are all about the land or all about the environment. It's like they lived off this land. They never needed anything to create Right, their lifestyle. They created their lifestyle. Uh, my simple answer to that is no. Um, it's it's not simply from indigenous. Um, hi, Ingrid. Um, but it's also, um, I mean, Norse mythology believes in them. Druid Druid mythology believes in them. All these different types of of people that people or um, ancestors who work with Earth that they they are all part of that Earth process and all of them have a belief even if they don't call them elementals it is the same thing um they they have that same belief that there is something there to protect the earth um we just know them as elementals even though they have been named other things in different cultures right and that and that's fair to say because i mean cryptids like i mean bigfoot has so many different names but at the bottom line it's most people would know it as a bigfoot but mm-hmm. depending on where you live, what you're from, and what you believe in, yep, it could be a Sasquatch. In Canada, we call them Sas- Sasquatch, yeah, because of the and yep. it, it's an indigenous thing. Indigenous right. people gave it the name Sasquatch. Yep. But when you put it all together, I mean, they're all they're they're all the same, and it just determines your culture yep. is who what who and the name that they come from, but they all do the same job. Right. And I believe uh, Bigfoot is along the same lines, not as far as where they're from, but I'd be Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, all of them are their own cultures, their own ethnicities. Um, right. As far as, as far as I know, you can even say they're from their own 
planets, galaxies, whatever else. And I just think right. our planet is simply a stepping stone between portals right. for them to travel through, which is why I think they're here and they're gone so fast because they know where they are. We just don't identify them. And what's or interesting, I just, I just recently heard, uh, I mean, I've heard it over the last few years on podcasts, whatnot, but I just, you know, sometimes you hear something, you get a Eureka, like a refresher. Oh, yeah. So we're talking about portals where Dale, I think, mentioned uh, Bigfoot can come and go pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, but also with Dogman, people report hearing in a lot of cases the sound of a, a massive steel door being shut. Yep. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. That is, not, that is not unfamiliar to me. Um, there's okay. a lot of places that there's a lot of places where dogman has been seen, yeah. but and and they they mention there's always some sound of of a metal bang or a steel bang or something along the lines, yeah. but yet they're in locations where there's no metal. They're right. Like, okay. And you're like, well, that's kind of odd, you know. <laughs> Why does it sound like this? And I'm standing in the middle of an open area and I'm looking at rocks. There's no right. metal out here. So you know, types of things. So yeah. So it's. It could be, a, you know, just something that how they come through, kind of like a sonic boom. That's what that's what they're hearing when the energy comes through behind them. That's what they're hearing, or that's what we're hearing. So yeah, these 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 creatures are beings. However, you wanna whatever resonates with you, right. whatever they are. Um, I don't know where they're coming from, but they're not of this earth. I don't care what people say. You know, I mean, they they both ha are known to have mind speak. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's you know, and it's like full-on conversations you know people have described that uh there's a gentleman we know here in ontario where we're from that'd be like a state it's a province of ontario and canada here for us um he's about six hours up the road uh he's got a uh he's got a, what he runs it's called sasquatch ontario he's been talking to a family for over 10 years um mm. and he's got vocals they're even saying his name like on recording you know it's amazing That's stuff awesome. I'll, I'll give you his info after uh, if you want just yeah, to check it out um, um, going back to elementals real quick, I'm sorry to keep chopping on that topic. Um, <laughs> now you say how they appear. I'm just curious because there's a lot of theories on shadow beings. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a shadow being could be an alien. It could be an, an interdimensional, but why could it not be an elemental as well? I just thought of this while we're talking here. An elemental is either seen or it's not seen. There's no in between. Um, it's not something that, um, that has that peripheral vision ability uh, and that you'll that you'll catch a glimpse of, and right. I think that ties simply because you're either in a spirit world, or you're, or you're here to see either to be seen. Whereas the elementals are simply from the environment, um, so they don't have that that um, that shadow figure. Um, I don't want to say ability, but that's not part of their because they're just elements, they're just from the environment, they're not spiritual, so that you don't see them in that glimpse. Okay. Okay. Now, Thank you. Yeah. Now, now, one question that popped into my mind, now, <laughs> similar to Bigfoot, you know, uh, Bigfoot has been known to be able to transform himself into like an orb-like ball to travel yeah. around. Right. Uh, people say if you see an orange glowing ball going through the woods, that you, you, they usually relate that to a Bigfoot right. that they're going. Now, do elementals travel the same way or are they just, they'll just blend into their environment or their element and just. That's, that's exactly what they do. They will blend into their element. Um, when when I was when I was at Hawaii, um, and then we went to this one location that where um, my my buddy Joe tells the stories to because he's a storyteller. He likes to talk about um, the ancestry of the islands and and their beliefs, and everything else, and he keeps it alive through story, just as they always have. Uh, when I got there, the wind it was dead calm until I got there, and when I got there, the wind just started howling. And he said, "There is an energy in in the air I've never felt before. What is this?" I'm like the air elementals on the island know I'm here and they're wel welcoming us, welcoming me to your island and letting me know that we are protected by them. And this is how it's going to go. And they walked us basically. You, I could see them basically tree hopping is what I call it. Um, but um, 
they could not. They could just feel the wind and the static in the air and everything else. Well, as soon as we got by the water, the wind left, and they did not see it leave. It went completely calm, and the stream that we went by picked up its speed, and it actually widened by about four inches because of how much water was coming down. And they went, what just happened? And I'm like, <laughs> air elementals left us, letting us know we're protected now by the water elementals, and they're showing that they are here. So they, they live in their environment. They show by their environment. Okay. Um, and simply by doing something like that. So you won't see them as an orb or anything else. It's simply the environment they live in. But they will let you know they are there simply by doing what they do best. Uh, you know, so that's and that's being in that element that they're part of. Very. I mean, that, that that's all fascinating. So, I mean, you're used to seeing them because you, you've been you've been doing this for a while now. Now, yeah. if, if somebody if somebody was trying to communicate with them or discover if they have elementals around. Talk. What what would be the best way for them or what would be, I guess, a way for them to communicate so that they can get to know who they're being surrounded by? Simply talk. Uh, the, the same way it is with spirit is the same way it is with... Like I said, elementals will not always... Um, they will not always present themselves to people, but they will want you to know that they're around because they're working. Uh, so if you're in an area and something is going on and, and or there's nothing going on and you're like, hey, I would really like to know if you're here or not. And all of a sudden, something as simple as it's been calm all day long. And all of a sudden, you get the gust of wind that blows through and then it stops 10 minutes later and it's completely calm again. They have just answered you. Um Okay. If there's, you know, if, there, if there's some form of disturbance in whatever whatever part that is, um, that is what that is itself presenting you. The hardest one to get to interact is fire. Uh, it is. Um, I don't want to say it's a diva, but it's fire will only present itself in the absolute necessary regions that it needs to. Um, it does not discriminate. Uh, it. It is. It is. It is not selfish. It is not say, You know what? That guy's a serial killer. I'm going to take his house. No, uh, <laughs> it, it, that's not how it works. Um, it's when you see it being cleared. When you see forest being cleared by the fire, it's because that fire elemental has decided this this ground is no longer good. It needs to be burnt so it can rise up again. And that's and that's them working in tandem. Fire will clean. Water will drop. Earth will go ahead and start churning up the ground and let life come back into it. So, Tom, interesting. Um, Dale mentioned you've been doing this a long time, but it's really only been three years. Three years. I'm 52, talk, now. I'm 52 now, and I started when I was 49. And, and to hear you talk and share your experiences and your knowledge, it sounds like you've been doing this 30 years. I kid you not. I don't and, spread cheeks here. I'm calling it like <laughs> I see it. No, I appreciate that. And, and I, can wow. kind of, I can kind of tell you why I think that is. Um, I... Yes, sir. I, I teach by trade. I'm an instructor by trade, so I'm up in front of talking to people in trade. But when I ran into that elemental that threw rocks at me, it ran for me initially. It knew I was there, and it stepped away from me. And I said, why are you walking away from me? Because I can watch it walk away. And he goes, because your essence is older than I am. And, wow. I, went, and I went, well, how old are you? And it went, I am 15,000 years old. Jesus. So talking to people who have been doing this for a while and when we sit down and we talk, they can look at me or they look at me and they're like, you're really the reason your stuff happens so fast is because you've been doing it for so many lifetimes in the past. It becomes immediate to you, which is why they say it hit me like a ton of bricks right. drinking from a fire hose, like I call it, yeah. uh, because it's so familiar to me in my past lives. It just took so long for it to open up in this life. So. Now you've moved on, uh, so you have a live stream. It's called yep. "Stuff You Never Learned from a School Book," a yep. podcast called "Stuff You Never Learned." Uh, yep. Originally, you, you 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 created this. It was a place for people not unlike yourself, believing they have paranormal gifts. Just it was like an outlet so they could get there and, and be around others. You know, not you know, questions, a feeling of belonging. Right, right, right. A they were outcast. Safe. They didn't feel like they were alone. They can yeah. ask questions. I would invite people on who were veterans, as I call them. Um, or experienced, then they can answer our questions if we had them. And that's why stuff I never learned from the school book, because initially when I came into it, I only had a couple people I can turn to, but I was very naive as well. 
I, I figured once I knew, once I learned I had abilities, we all had the exact same abilities. Come to find out that is wrong um, <laughs> because they were doing things I couldn't do and I was doing things they couldn't do. And yeah. asking one or two people was not cutting it. I needed to know more. So I built the community of stuff I never learned from a school book. And I call them my family, the audience, my family, because they come in and they ask questions and they engage. And they just want to soak up knowledge. And it's fantastic that we get the chance to help each other. And that's how that came about to being. Okay. Okay. Now you, now it, apparently it's built up. It, it's, oh it's, my goodness. Yeah. It's come a long way. Um, you got, you have people, they, they talk about their alien encounters. You, yep. So UFO encounters, cryptids, witches, empaths, investigators, life healing instructors. You got guides. It's got anything and everything. A to Z. The, creeps, got the freaks and the weirdos, as yeah. we love to call them. And that's a, a, a highest honor when we say that to anybody. That's yeah, a compliment. Yeah. Numerologists, right. astrologists, tarot readers, yeah. starseed, uh, starseed people yep. that can, people can tell you that actually what starseed you are from and where your starseed soul originated from. I have them all on, but even though I have every single person on from all walks of life, my question, my first question is always the same. My show is like yours, it's never canned. But my first question always is how did you get started and what brought you into this? Because right. it is a learning environment, and I need people to understand that you can come from any walk of life at any age, at any point, and step into this, uh, whether you're attempting to or whether, like I did, by accident. Uh, and so it's very important for, for that first story to be told by that person so it still has the educational side to it of why I built stuff I never learned from a school book. Right. And then after that, we can talk about whatever they want. But <laughs> they still have to have that understanding that this is not – this is not expected to be the same for anybody. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, I just want to go back a little bit. So you got hit with all this three yes. years ago. <laughs> and I mean, but it's, I mean, you really didn't have anything out of the ordinary happen to you throughout your life up to the point of 49 years old. You're you're now going into your first investigation, and you, you are just getting bombarded by information in this location, and you're discovering you have all these gifts at once. I mean, I, I know people usually start out, though they know they have something, freaks them out, they shut, they figure, they just kind of turn it off or just ignore it, and then later on in life, they kind of just give in and say, okay let's let's do this right yeah so, so I, will, with... I will let you know that i did have an, a small inkling but it took me getting my abilities to understand what that inkling was in the past and that really is something as simple as i'm i'm prior military um i used to run a team on the ground and we were always a very small unit and i was our team lead all right um I had the uncanny ability, and it never failed. It kept so much of us alive because of this. I could sense before something like, I can say, okay, everyone, stop. Cover. And at first, they'd ask, why are we covering? We're not getting any information. We're not hearing anything. We would cover, and all of a sudden, a larger patrol would come walking by or rolling by or something else. And they were like, how did you do that? I'm like, gut feeling. Don't know. Gut feeling. And <laughs> after it happened, for like the first two or three times, they were like, Stop asking why it's happening. Just fucking cover. Sorry, <laughs> just, just cover. Just <laughs> so, do it. <laughs> uh, so, and that became uh, that became yeah. something that we relied upon heavily. Was was I the best way to say it is my sixth sense about what was about to happen, uh, and it and it has seemed to carry over to something as stupid as sports casting. I'll be watching a, a stupid football game, and they'll be driving down the field. And I'm like, ah, oh, don't jump off sides. And the very next play, they jump off sides. <laughs> and they're like, what? Why did you call that? I'm like, I'm sorry. I saw it coming. And, and so it's just always kind of been a sixth sense. And then when this happened, I'm like, oh, this must have been part of it kind right. of that was taking place. And I just didn't recognize it was happening until now I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, not really. I'm still in a learning stage, as all of us are. But yeah. um, at least I understand more about it now. So. Yeah, no, I mean, that is it. I mean, our gifts, we never truly understand the full uh, extent of our gifts or even know the abilities that we have right. because we're always learning more and something else will happen. And 
you know, it just keeps triggering one another thing will trigger and stuff like that. So no, we, we truly don't know it. And I know me and Michael John feel the same way. Those people out there that call themselves expert or professionals. And I'm like, okay, exactly. What are you an expert of or yeah. a professional of? I mean, I, I've been doing this over a decade now, and every time I turn around, I'm always learning something new. But I, that's me. Like I, I have the sign that I'm always wanting to learn. Right. And I think that's my driving force in the paranormal. I do have some gifts, but my my always wanting to know more drives. Be, right. And I think this is amazing. And, and like I said first learning everything about you and i'm like wow i mean this guy has gifts that people wish they had and understanding of elementals <laughs> i have never that. met anybody with so much knowledge of them thank you but i mean it's <laughs> it's absolutely amazing so thank, thank you. you so much i mean like just just learning all this i would be like now i've got a lot of research ahead of me now Thanks, <laughs> I always, Tom. I is this my you. homework from your school book <laughs> yes yes <laughs> everyone takes something home for homework um but no i i've always told i've 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 stolen it i've only had one mentor in my entire life well my entire three years um and she just kind of pushed me along the right direction at fast her name is Joni white buffalo um, she's actually up there in Canada as well. Um, she is a, a shaman, um, Lakota, and she initially told me, look, um, you're never going to know it all. And this is my, my, my need to, to crave knowledge. And she goes, you'll never know it all. And she said, so I said, well, is it okay if I identify myself as a practicing intuitive? She said, absolutely. She goes, that's a perfect title because a lot of people will, will have a lot of different gifts, but they will call themselves by what their prominent gift stands out. I'm a medium. I'm a psychic. I'm a tarot reader. I'm whatever. Unfortunately, none of mine have broken out of the pack yet. Um, so I'm just simply a practicing intuitive, uh, trying to take in everything I can on all of them. Uh, but I also tell people I am absolutely the laziest person you'll ever know because I don't meditate. I don't do all the stuff to try to make myself better. If it presents itself to me and I have the opportunity to learn it, fantastic. If not, it's not meant for me in the first place. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tom, but, what I want to ask you sure, uh, with, with uh, you know, the opportunity for, for these people to get together with you and, and the like everybody else to learn about themselves and to grow and get better and, and understand more about what their gifts are or what they don't even know they have yet. Right. People listening, watching right now, listening on, on, on uh, after the fact here, however that's going to be, um, how can they get involved with you and be a part of this group? Uh, if you're looking for my show specifically or something along those lines, is that what you're asking? You're, you specifically. It's about you. Okay. So. Um, if you're if you're looking for mine, I, I run a site called Stuff I Never Learned from a School Book. It's on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and um, Instagram, and they're all shortened to stuff I never learned. All is one word, um, because otherwise everything else just runs really, really, really long. Um, it's all just called stuff I never learned under all four of those umbrellas. My Gmail is even the same way. I have a Gmail you can contact me at, ask questions, anything you want. It's called stuff I never learned at gmail.com. Pretty simple. Um, so that's the best way to get a hold of me. My pod or my live stream, like you guys are doing here. Uh, runs every other Monday night, and the weeks that I'm not doing the live stream, I just simply put out a 15 to 20 minute podcast about what's going on in my head. Like my last one, I'm the one I'm about to do is simply comparing and contrasting angels and dragons, how they are similar, how they are different. Um, why do the colors of the green dragon do life, death, and rebirth, while as our green angel is all about healing? Why is the white dragon? Uh, holiness and purity, while as our white angel is all about holiness and purity. Um, and why does Western culture and uh, Western European identify dragons as evil, as is written in some of the scripture, but right. other places such as um, Native or Asian culture sees it as a positive, as a blessing. Yeah. So I'm so that's my next podcast coming out is, is comparing and contrasting those two. So. That, I mean... <laughs> 
I, I, I definitely got to watch that one because I, that is definitely, and, and you know, and it's people's take on things. And right, but it's interesting. You're just that's the stuff that keeps me up all night, and that's why I suffer from insomnia <laughs> because I'll be lying in bed and I'll be like, "Why does a dragon breathe fire? Right. Why does a penguin walk the way they do? Yeah, <laughs> why but, don't I mean, yeah, yep. I, I'm the same way. I I sleep on average about three to four nights, uh, uh three to four hours a night. Yeah. That's my typical. So, <laughs> oh, I mean that that I mean that that is. So, let's see what what could we ask you to try. So you're you're in the Nebraska area. So yep. I'm Nebraska. what 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 is the hi Kelly? What is the big uh, paranormal yeah. thing in Nebraska? So Nebraska has a couple of smaller ones, but actually I am 10 to 15. Hi, Kelly. Um, she's actually part of my Paranormal Existence Research Society team. Um, there's actually, um, I'm right 10 minutes across from Iowa and right across the border from us. We actually have the the um, the uh, Squirrel County Jail, which is actually the oldest round like squirrel cage jail there is called the Squirrel Cage Jail. Uh, it only housed so many people. Um, and it's, you would have the, um, the person on top who was a warden and all the prisoners were underneath and some of them were crushed by when it spun because there's only one way in, one way out. Some would try to escape oh, and they would spin it and it would crush the person. Good uh, gosh. But we're also very well known for Malvern Manor that Josh Hurd owns and, um, he's over in Malvern, Iowa. And that place has held many different titles, um, uh, poor house, hospital, asylum, um, a, a lot of different things. And so it has uh, a lot of historic information as well as spiritual information that happens. It's, it's kind of cool um, to go there during day. Hi, Rosie. And during night, uh, two totally different, two totally different lives between daytime and nighttime at Malvern Manor. Daytime, is open to the public. You can walk in, pay a small fee, go check it out, get cool things on your video, get cool things on your audio, unless you're me, and then it just erases it all like it did before. Um, and the other thing it will do is uh, at nighttime, it turns dark and it turns evil, and that's when the darker spirits come out and try wow. to actually literally picked up one of my friends who is about 6'3", probably about 340, picked him up out of his cot and drug him across the floor while he was sleeping. Uh, Damn. So, yeah, so it has definitely has two sides of the coin. I'm also very close to the Bliska Axe House, um, so those are all pretty close to me. Yep, that's, that was my wife chiming in right there. Um, <laughs> Hi, Nicole. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Nicole. House. Yep, that's I. I normally say it, and then she writes it, so that's kind of how that worked right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're 45 minutes away from there. Um, so we have a lot of local stuff, but there's uh, there's a lot of untapped here, uh, at least for at least for the majority of the public. There's a lot of um, untapped, like we've seen it, we've gone to it, we've investigated it. There's another place, and we want to go investigate relatively soon once the weather turns nice. It is actually a an identified place for a, a burial for a Native American chief. And about 20 years later, the Christians wanted to claim it, so they built the church right on top of the land. Um, so wow. I want to go investigate that place to see all what kind of uh, – <laughs> she's correcting me. Um, <laughs> but, um, but these are the kind of places we want to go investigate that are untapped. And, and if we find stuff, um, we want to help explain that where it's at so other people that are interested come to it. I, and that and that's fascinating. And I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, I I think that has a lot of activity. I know where we are. There is a lot of indigenous land, and now it's mm-hmm. built upon. And people are always saying they have a lot of activity in their house. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, you pissed them off. You, <laughs> you you put your house on top of them. Yeah. Um, so real quick here, I mean, like this this hour flew by real quick. <laughs> I I just I mean, you have a military background, and now yeah. and I know the the military was very famous for teaching their soldiers how to do remote viewing. Yes. Now, Ooh. are you able to do that? I can remote. I 
surprisingly enough, I taught myself how to remote view and I taught myself how to astral travel without knowing that's what I was doing. When I explained it to somebody, someone said, how on earth did you put yourself into self-hypnosis so you can remote view? How did you, re how did you put yourself into that remote or that state that you can astral travel? I'm like, I don't know. I just willed it. And they're like, that's insane. So yes, I could, my remote viewing is limited right now. I'm still working on being able to, to look at a larger area. I normally come into the smaller area so I don't get to identify fully where I am. Um, but the astral travel is pretty immediate. I can do it at any point. Uh, I, apparently I taught myself how to help, help self-hypnosis and then I can travel. Um, tested it out by meeting my mentor at a certain location that she always astral travels to and she said, find me here and I did. So wow. it, was, it was pretty interesting, yeah. And it's funny because I, I, I mean, for the little, little, little bit that I know about those two topics, you would think that uh, um, so astral travel is something you got to meditate, kind of get into a state to do. Right. Uh, whereas the other um, should, should be, be easier. Should be easier. And yeah. Remote yeah. Yeah. it's amazing that, I mean, Absolutely. everybody's different, right? So it's yeah. just amazing yeah. that it's the opposite for you. I've never, not the, again, I haven't, I know. I've met a few people that do it. Dale and I have talked about wanting to do remote viewing. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, it's one of those things we talk about it in passing, then, you know, next chapter kind of thing, you forget about it. Then you have those eureka moments like right now. And it's a reminder. Thank you. Um, but yeah. Wow. Just, I just want to comment. Just, wow. That's it's yeah. so interesting. Pretty weird. Now, now oh, one, one last quick question. Sure. Um, have you ever had a UFO experience? Not to my knowledge. Um, that is something that I am still very much a novice at. It's not because I haven't tried. Uh, it's simply because they have not, as, as far as I know, consciously, possibly subconsciously, but consciously, they have not made themselves readily available to me. Uh, so unfortunately, no, not on that side. Wow. And, and I mean, it, it, it'll probably happen. If anything's going to happen to you, it seems like, you ask for it, it will eventually show up in its presence to you. That's how I That's how I learned I can see auras. Uh, two people I was sitting with really quick said, hey, can you see auras? And I instantly saw their auras. I'm like, yep. And they said, it's the color of our auras. And I told them both. And they were like, that's amazing. Like, yours is blue and Michael John's right now. Or yours is uh, blue, yes. And Michael John's right now is yellow. So, um, wow. Stop yeah, it. <laughs> it, happens, it happens rapidly. So, wow. What does it mean? What does the color mean? Unfortunately, I have no idea what the colors mean. I just can see the colors, but you can simply look them up online. That's what most people yeah. do. Yeah. Um, know that you have one solid, absolute aura color, and you can have layered auras, and those normally generate with your mood, your emotion, uh, sickness, whatever else may be happening to you, and your and your outer auras will change color. Okay. I will definitely look that up. Absolutely. Yeah. But, Tom, I just want to say thank you so much for taking your time to really, I mean – Wow, what a learning session this was. I mean, I appreciate it. We, we, our audience learned so much about elemental, say, portals <laughs> and everything else to go along with it. So, I'm going to give you a very quick moment here. <clears throat> Tell us where we can find you, where are you going to be if you are at any events. So, people who want to come out and talk to you in person, sure. Uh, the stage is all yours. I appreciate it. Uh, so those of you who know me know I mostly do everything online. I'm not really one that goes out and about uh, to places yet. I haven't, uh, I've been asked to do vendor stuff, but I haven't yet. But I'm going to be roaming the Holistic Fest here in Omaha, Nebraska. That is coming up on the 23rd and 24th of March. Uh, that's how I actually find local people who are, um, who have abilities and I resonate with their energies really well and bring them on my show so they have a platform to talk to. Uh, other than that, contact me through email if you have questions, concerns, anything along those lines, you can reach out at me at stuff I never learned at gmail.com. Otherwise, come watch me on my show. Absolutely amazing. Thank, like I said, Tom, thank you so much for talking to us today. It was a great Pleasure getting to know you. I look forward to meeting you again down the road. Thank you. Hopefully, we can meet out in person sometime and uh, just just hang out. And, and, and I want to I want to be around you and see see you 
definitely get action around these elementals because I, I would love, I mean, I would love to be able to do what you can do and be able to see them and watch them do what they do. So, yeah, no, absolutely. So thank you so much once again. I appreciate it. it, it it's been a great pleasure. Thanks, guys. And I, want to, I also want to say thank you so much, Tom, uh, for taking time for us, taking time, of course, for the creeps, the freaks, the weirdos, the TPV nation, everybody from day one to day now. We don't get to do what we're doing, and that is this right here, right now, without all of you, without all the support we get. Uh, along the way from from anyone and everyone thank you to all our guests of course great guests like tom springer tom i'll tell you what there's an energy tonight almost a feeling a different type of mood tonight and i think it's something to do with you and your energy i really feel different in a positive way and again like i said earlier i do not spread cheeks you know what i mean i say it as we go here brother and that's it um so thank you so much for that tom springer ladies and gentlemen man with abilities uh literally listing from a to z psychics mediumship abilities elementals speaking different dimensions, healing others, touching burst energy or identification, just to name a few. Dale's was blue. Mine was yellow. I'm definitely checking that out after the show to find out what the heck that's all about. Definitely excited for that. Thank you to everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. We're trying to get our numbers up. Please and thank you for that. And of course, later on, you can listen Saturday nights, 1 a.m., KGRA Digital, that is worldwide, folks. Anywhere, any type of live stream, you can hear the paranormal voice. Windsor, Ontario's own. Uh, are we frozen or what? Can you guys? Oh, no, okay. I swear everybody was frozen. That was weird. Okay. Anyways, in the meantime and in between time, thank you all again. We'll see you all on the other side. Happy hauntings. Happy hauntings. <laughs>